Hey there, it's CJ Willing. I'm cracking a pack today. I'm back with pack number 30 of my 1988 Topps Mini Leaders box. I'm trying to see how many packs I have to crack to get all 77 cards in the complete set. I've included the link to the preview video in the description below, which gives a little explanation on the set and the highlights of what I could pull in cracking these packs. Since each pack only has seven cards in it, I'm going to guess, guess the categories, category or categories the player led their league in, and then I'm going to flip over the cards, see if I was right, or how very bad my memory is in 1987 MLB season. Got my great checklist here, mark off number 30. I have 37 more cards to go to get my third complete set. I've already completed sets one and two, and I'm trying to get that third set. I have 49 total possible cards left to go, so I'm hoping that I don't have too many quadruplicates and I get the triplicates that I need for the set. All right, let's go ahead and get to cracking this pack. I think Mark Langston is one of those that I need as a triplicate. Uh, so is Dion James. So, so far, so good. Let's get rid of the Spring Fever Baseball and get to cracking the pack. All right, first card out of the pack is Mike Scott. Uh, let's see, is Mike Scott one of my triplicates needed? Yes, he is. Things are looking good. All right, Mike Scott. Uh, was instrumental in leading the Astros to the 1986 National League West Division crown. Uh, he originally came up the Mets. Once he mastered that split-fingered fastball, or some people would say the scuffball, uh, Scott's career really took off. He had a great kind of mid-80s and then uh, peter out toward the end of the, the 80s and, and early 90s. Um, Scott was a league leader, I believe, in wins, um, strikeouts, and ERA. So I got strikeouts uh, second, and then third in victories. He was first in game started, third in shutouts, um, fourth in innings, fifth in complete games, and seventh in ERA, a 16 and 13 record with a 3.23 ERA. Okay, Jack Morris, Hall of Famer out of the pack. He's one of the triplicates that we need. Uh, Jack Morris uh, was an absolute workhorse, best pitcher in the 80s in the American League. Uh, it's a shame that it took so long for him to get voted into the Hall of Fame. He didn't even get it with the regular voting. He had to wait till the Veterans Committee, which is unfortunate because I really think Jack Morris deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, he's one of the underrated players of the 80s, along with Dale Murphy, um, Dave Parker, Dwight Evans, uh, that, that should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Morris was perennially a league leader in wins. He typically had a high ERA, but I think 87 may have been the year that he had a relatively low ERA as he helped the Tigers uh, go to the American League East Championship. He was 8th in victories, 5th in ERA, and 5th in strikeouts, also 6th in complete games. Dion James is our next card. He's one that we need for our third set. Uh, James was a league leader in stolen bases. Uh, I think that was it. I may be wrong. He may have been doubles. I can't remember. Uh, he wasn't really a full-time player, mainly a part-time player. I can't remember if it was doubles or steals. I'm going to go with doubles. Yeah, fourth in doubles. Oh, yeah. Fifth in batting average and then tenth in on-base percentage. I don't remember much of Deion James's career other than he was pretty much a fourth outfielder for uh, a couple of different teams. Juan Samuel is up next. Uh, Samuel came out of the Gator Roar and is a rookie second base with the Phillies. Uh, spent a long career with the Phillies, Mets, I think Tigers as well. Uh, maybe even the Orioles. Uh, I kind of forget the last couple of teams that he played for. Samuel had a lot of speed and he had a little bit of pop. He also knew how to strike out as well. I believe in 87 he was a league leader in steals and doubles and also triples. So he was 4th in doubles, 5th in hits, 1st in triples, 6th in runs, ninth in runs batted in, and 10th in home runs. He also had 35 stills, but apparently back in those days, that wasn't enough to get you into the top 5. Hall of Famer Andre Dawson is our second Hall of Famer in the pack. Um, Dawson uh, was a great player. Um, cool thing about Andre Dawson was after the 86 season, the, the, the owners colluded. And and held out lot uh, held out in giving contracts. A lot of players had to go overseas. A lot of players had to settle for measly contracts. It was found later on that they colluded in a big lawsuit. Andre Dawson couldn't find a club. 
He wanted to play on grass because his knees were hurting him so bad. He actually drove to Arizona where the Cubs had their spring training, begged for a job, signed a blank contract. Contract ended up only being, I think, for $550,000 with incentives. It got him up to $850,000. Um, he had an MVP season in 87. He's a league leader in home runs, RBI, um, I think runs, on-base percentage, and slugging percentage. <clears throat> First in home runs, first in RBI, first in game winning RBI, fifth in hits, and sixth in slugging percentage. Okay, we got our checklist. Everyone needs a checklist to keep stuff straight. Another card that we need is triplicate. Okay, and our final card in the pack is Mark Langston, another card that we needed to complete our third set. So every card today uh, went toward completing that set. So if uh, the last you know, um, five packs hold true, then I'm going to make it to that third complete set. Mark Langston was a league leader in victories and strikeouts with the Mariners. The Mariners in the mid-80s were a perennially bad team. Uh, Langston, you know, was the bright star for their pitching. Uh, unfortunately, had to suffer along with Alvin Davis and a couple other players. Uh, Langston later moved on, uh, had a solid career with the Angels, uh, Padres, Expos, um, I don't think he quite got to 200 wins. I think he was around the neighborhood of like 180, 190, but nonetheless a great pitcher. In 87, he's a league leader in victories and strikeouts. First in strikeouts, third in victories, third in innings, third in shutouts, fourth in complete games, and ninth in games started. 19 and 13 record with a woeful Mariners team uh, showed that Mike, Mark Langston was a pretty good pitcher. Um, card I want to spotlight... Um, I think I've already spotlighted Jack Morris and Mike Scott. Um, let's go with Juan Samuel. Juan Samuel has a little bit of a memory to me um, because I remember getting his rookie cards in 1985. They were really hot. Samuel came up uh, with the rookies, had a phenomenal rookie year. Um, he was speedy. He had a little bit of pop. I mean, he wasn't the best defensive player. But it looked like he was going to be, you know, a superstar with the Phillies. He did have a decent career, um, but just never came into that, you know, it, it seemed like he could have been the Robinson Cano of the mid-80s to late 80s. Um, but strikeouts back in that time frame were, were frowned upon heavily, and he looked like he was going to turn out to be like the Rob Deere of infillers. He put together a solid career nonetheless, um, and so those are some of my memories of Juan Semmel in the mid-80s. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Also share with me in the comments what your favorite card or what you thought was the best card in the pack. Until next time when I'm back to crack the next pack of 1988 Topps Mini Leaders in my quest to complete set number three.